Let's go. Let's go. Julian Brujeas, soy manager y mecánico para el Olap Team y estamos ahora en Pietra Ligure para la primera EDRE en Europa. Las EDR eh, son carreras de enduro con e-bike y esto es el más alto nivel que puede haber, es, es, son copas del mundo. formato en este tipo de carrera es subidas en bici, a veces puede haber un shuttle o un lift, pero en general es subida, todo subida en bici, por eso hay un tiempo predeterminado, tienen que subir, es mucho tiempo, a veces es una hora, una hora y media, hasta dos horas para subir puertos y bajadas cronometradas y es respetar el tiempo de subida si no hay penalti y es el tiempo de bajada que hace el resultado. Yeah, but this one was connected to the phone. My name is Nick Murdick. I'm the mountain bike product manager for Shimano North America, based out of California in the U.S. Well, the EEDR races have been a great way for us to start pushing the limit of our product. We really got interested in this kind of racing last year. Um, we feel like it's a good test of the ability of the bike. So it's, uh, it's pushing kind of the, the controllability, the technical capability of the bike to its extreme and that's why it's a great place for us to uh, find out how controllable, how successful our product can be. The difference in between the staging on a normal and e-bike e race will be the um, pretty much the same on the way down because we're going to do the same here in, in Pietra Ligure. It's just the timing will be short than a normal bike because of the e-bike. We just have three more stages with uh, including um, two power stage, which means a uh, stage on the way up with a technical section uh, will, uh, where the engine and the skills will, will make a difference in between the, the riders. semana tipo de carrera, llegamos eh, cuatro o cinco días antes de la carrera, eh, montamos la estructura, nos tomamos un poco la, el ambiente de la zona, eh, si están accesibles si se puede hacemos un track walk, es decir que vamos a ver andando los circuitos para ya saber, para ver las dificultades, empezar a pensar a unas líneas, saber qué material vamos a utilizar. Después entonces, tenemos un día de entreno, donde se hace en un día todos toro los stages, todos los especiales. Y un día off, que nos permite a los corredores recuperar un poco de fuerza y al staff de preparar las bicis, para que al final, el día de carrera, que se hace todo en un día, y bastante largo, donde tienen entre 6 a 10 especiales, y esto es el, el día de la carrera. La Power Stage es lo mismo que, bueno, es un tramo que se hace en las bicis eléctricas, un tramo especial, la única diferencia de los otros es que en esta ocasión es en subida y normalmente en enduro normal son todas en bajada.
Well, first stage actually is a stage, uh, stage of uh, climb, all the way on the climbing. And uh, this one especially is, looks like a little bit of trail because it's going up, down, up, down, but very technical. And uh, it's the first one for me uh, as uh, this concept, but uh, it's really fun. I mean, it's not only on the engine, it's, uh, you need to be also uh, pretty <laughs> smart on where you're going to put your wheel. So it's, uh, it's good fun. It's going to be hard because it's, uh, it's a big, big day. So we'll need to be uh, very focused on this one. seems like uh, an e-bike race that's going uphill could just be a test of the motor and not the rider. Uh, but uh, the courses here have been really well designed and they're getting better every year. And uh, they're allowing us to see if we're delivering the power in the right way so that the rider can clear the technical challenge, stay in control of their bike as uh, they're staying on top of the power being delivered from the from the bike. Um, and uh, and that really, I think, is the is the difference with modern e-bike racing. Yeah, quite busy. A lot of work. Oh, yeah. This is taking so much time. But yeah. good. The EP8 drive unit was really was designed by mountain bikers to make it the most capable one on the trail, feel the most like a regular mountain bike. Um, the way that the power is delivered is kind of unique compared to other ones on the market. That uh, it's constantly choosing an assist ratio automatically based on the trail conditions and what the rider is doing. So it's not just a set assist ratio 100% of the time. Uh, that really can help the rider stay in control of their bike better, makes their battery last longer, um, and it increases the maximum assist ratio that we can deliver to any rider. En el momento de los entrenos es cuando más decisiones se van tomando, ¿no? Eh, me siento como, no me siento cómodo. Creo que si cambio estas cubiertas voy a estar más cómodo, bajar, manillar, subir, eh, pues etcétera. Es, es un sinfín de configuraciones. Ruedas de aluminio, de carbono, manillares con más rise, menos rise, etcétera. Es mucho. Hay configuraciones para todo lo que quieras la bici. Entonces el piloto tiene que ser bastante analítico y, y ver que que poner en cada momento y decidir por el mismo, no por lo que otros decidan o lo que el mecánico diga a lo mejor. El, yo siempre decido por mí mismo, yo lo tengo clarísimo y pongo lo que, lo que creo que me va a beneficiar más. O en este caso, que también estamos probando, lo que creo que necesitamos eh, testear más. Yeah, the technology and uh, the bicycle, the engine, everything had a big impact on the, on the on the racing days because all the products are different. So some products will be better on the on the way down, some other one will be better on the way up. So you need to adjust your bike on every race and to adjust your style of riding on every race, which is made uh, all the time the racing challenging and uh, interesting because of that. En función del tipo de carrera que vamos a tener, eh, cambiamos cosas en la bici. Por ejemplo, para las carreras tipo Maxi Mega Avalanche, que es solo bajada, podemos usar la batería de 360 que nos permite ahorrar eh, peso. 
Aquí en la CEDR usamos la batería grande y el material más resistente que podemos utilizar porque los tramos son bastante chungos. Really good, but ooh, super tough. Yeah, pretty long day. Pretty, pretty long. He bikes not easy. Yeah? Oh my god, I'm dying. But man, I'm happy. Lo que intentamos es eh, guardar todo en memoria. Anotamos eh, los settings de suspensiones, qué ruedas, qué cubierta, eh, cómo estaba la bici en cada carrera para saber si algo se repite, de si puede ser de tal componente o de otro. Eh, después recuperamos los datos de, del Garmin, que la bici está conectada con un Garmin y que nos permite saber eh, cuántos kilómetros, el desnivel, la velocidad máxima y cosas así. Eh, recuperamos los temas de autonomía, sabemos que por tantos kilómetros, tanta distancia, hemos usado tantos porcentajes. Y, eh, y también el feedback de los corredores, que es súper importante. Saben ellos qué, um, qué sienten con la bici, con este tipo de componentes. Y entonces intentamos guardar, tener el máximo de datos posible. I met Damian just a, a few weeks ago. Of course, he's been playing with the bike a bit already. Uh, I could talk to him about our experiences from racing last year uh, at the EWSE races and uh, uh, could share kind of that uh, automatic shifting while descending, um, that it had a stage win last year and it can be a very valuable tool. Um, so of course we had pretty good confidence in it, but when you bring on a, a new rider working on a new project, always you're wondering if they're going to agree. It was uh, great to see that Damian really embraced the idea of automatic shifting uh, from the beginning and that he could feel the benefit. And to take that a step further, he also agreed that the Link Glide drivetrain You know, it's not just a high durability e-bike drive system. There's an advantage to using it in a race scenario because it could shift so smoothly while he's putting out so much power uh, that uh, um, it really kind of is the sweet spot for e-bike racing for him. Uh, for the bicycle, if I have one word to describe uh, on the, this race, uh, it will be rocket. <laughs> Um, it's really, yeah, I keep coming back to it, the sweet spot of power and control and kind of a natural ride feel and it's fun to ride and it's not holding the rider back. The bike that we have now is very good and it's a incredible bike, but we want to develop the bike and the components of the future. If I have to define uh, Olab in one word, I guess it will be testing. The main objective of, of uh, Olab, uh, like I said before, is uh, testing, 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 developing, training again, and uh, yeah, giving, giving our best as a rider and, uh, and working with the engineers to, to have the best bike possible. Mm -hmm.